a beautiful day here in the UK, off to Cheltenham in England to Aquascape, a Aquascaper 900 for a client, his name's Dave, he's really excited, I'm really excited, I hope you guys are excited too. So I'm here at Dave's absolutely beautiful home and an absolutely stunning setup. We've got the Aquascaper 900 tank on here by Evolution Aqua. We've got the cabinet, which is the raw concrete gray, really lovely modern kind of stylish uh, cabinet. And then behind it, we've got a custom built kind of background, which is actually made from um, reclaimed pallets, which have been kind of rubbed down, waxed, and they've been fit to the back. And we've got the Kessel lights there, two A360 WE tuner suns with the petrol controller, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. It's hidden, obviously, the kind of vertical elements of the lighting arms. You can't see any of the cables, and I just think the whole setup looks great, and hopefully we can do it justice with an amazing aquascape. Can't wait to get started. Let's go. Okay guys, time to scape. I'm really excited about this one. So I've got some awesome wood from Aquarium Gardens. Now this has actually been in the shop for about two years. It was kind of hidden underneath a load of other wood. And so I dug it out and I think it looks amazing. It's a bit different to your standard kind of bog wood. It's a bit lighter, but it will go much darker once it's been completely soaked after a couple of weeks. Um, it might float, so I haven't tested it yet. So we will kind of weigh it down with some soil and some rocks to prevent it from floating. It's called, What's it called? This is awkward, isn't it? Oh, I'm gonna have to give Dave a ring. Can you pass me my phone? I asked him, I phoned him last night. I know I phoned you last night to ask what that wood was called, but I've forgotten already. What is it? Uh, curio. Like curious, but without the US on the end. I might have to double check that actually. I'll have a look and text it to you mate. Yeah, thanks buddy. See you soon. All right. Cheers See mate, bye. bye. Really, really nice. We've got a couple of pieces. And these are going to form like an island kind of composition. Uh, we're going to fiddle around obviously to make the best layout possible. And then I've got some awesome stone which I've only used I think ever twice before. So this is called fossilised wood stone or fossilised wood and it's uh, basically ancient wood and it's been compressed over the thousands of years and it's super heavy just like a rock. It doesn't influence water chemistry as far as I know. It's got beautiful kind of um, greys, browns, white sort of textures and I just think it's really nice and I think it matches the wood really well and it's just a bit different to the kind of mini landscape rock, rock or dragonstone which we normally find in UK aquascaping. So super excited about using that and we've got 17 kilos of this so plenty to, plenty to go around, we might have some spare. Let's go! In. I think it looks great already. You're really happy with it. Dave's happy with it. That's the main thing. I uh, just phoned Dave from Aquarium Gardens. He just texted me to say that the supplier doesn't actually stock it anymore. It was called Curio Wood. I think if you wanted to get something similar, you're probably looking at um, a Pani Wood. Obviously, similar shape kind of stuff. Uh, it might cause some tannins, but with regular water changes, you could use carbon filtration. You can get rid of the tannins. Some people actually like the tannins. It's worth reiterating how important the hardscaping process is. If you've watched any of my aquascaping kind of step-by-step -step videos, I'll often talk about the hardscape being like the backbone of the layout. You start off with a really strong hardscape and with the planting and the fish, you can create a really strong aquascape straight away. Our soil in, I've used two 9 litre bags of Tropica soil and one 8 litre bag of the Denelay Scaper soil, very similar products and they both work the same, so provide nutrients to the plant roots, they help to buffer the pH slightly, they help to reduce the KH slightly and they're just basically, it's basically a really good product to promote healthy plant growth. 
Um, one of the really kind of benefits of soil as well, it has a high cation exchange capacity or CEC and that, what that does it takes in nutrients from the water column, locks it into the soil and makes those nutrients available to the plant roots. And what I like to do is also feed a liquid fertilizer as well as a nutrient rich soil and that really spoils the plants, it gives the plants loads of helpful nutrients, that promotes really healthy plant growth and we know what healthy plant growth means, less algae. Okay, so that's the hardscape process complete. We've used this ultra rare curio wood, uh, fossilized wood stone, and we've used six stones. I normally go for an odd number, but unless it's a Nirigumi with a minimalist carpet, it's not really a problem. We've deliberately put that big stone there on top of the wood. That's gonna help it keep it weighed down. And it's also gonna provide areas to attach more of our rheophyte or epiphyte plants. And that's gonna be disguised with those plants as well. So if it looks a little bit odd now, don't worry about it. And I think the whole hardscape looks great already. Um, I think Dave's happy with it. Dave's really happy with it. Good, that's the main thing. And obviously it's gonna be transformed once we planted, which we're gonna do soon. Okay, so this is the plant preparation area. We're gonna separate the plants into individual groups. So rheophytes and epiphytes, stem plants, uh, ferns, etc. It's gonna make the process much more efficient. Uh, Dave's gonna give me a hand as well. And we're gonna do a time-lapse, yay. Dave and I have prepared all of the plants. We're going to start off by planting the carpeting species. So we've got some Staragoni repens here. We've got some Micranthema Monte Carlo here. Some Eleocharis mini here. And some Echinodorus tenilus here. Now uh, the Staragoni, the Monte Carlo and the Eleocharis are all Tropica 1-2 grow and they come in a liquid medium which is super easy to prepare and the Echinodorus tenilus is from Aquaflora which comes in a jelly which is a bit tricky to repair. So interesting fact, fun fact I would say about the Echinodorus tenilus is that it's been, uh, some people call it Helanthium tenilum uh, so it's kind of been reclassified but there's actually a few different varieties now this variety is is really beautiful actually and it, at, when it under decent lighting which we've got in here you'll see a nice red tinge in towards the center of the leaf so that's going to look really attractive so these are the foreground plants we'll plant these first and we plant into dry soil because that's much easier less messy and actually helps to prevent the plants from floating once you're filled with water so let's do that now and let's do another time lapse yes. Our foreground plants now it's time to plant our crypts now many of you will know I love my crypts and that's because they're super low maintenance they look great and they're just really easy we've got loads of species we've got about six or seven species here I'll list the whole plant species in the description uh, below one of the ones I did want to talk about is this Cryptocoryne crispulata now it's really short at the moment but this has been uh, from the Tropica 1-2 grow range and it will grow really tall so this needs to go in the background it's going to create a really lovely uh, vertical kind of element to the aquascape kind of might arch over and actually go to the surface and, and look really great uh, we've got some kind of medium sized species and we've got some smaller species but these are going to all going to be planted around the mid ground and like I said the crispilato will go in the background so let's plant it now and do another time lapse Crips are planted, now it's time to plant some stem plants. These are called Hygrophila costata. I think we've got two or three pots worth here. That was a bit of rogue Buca Falundra, we'll plant that later. They might not be a long-term addition to the scape because they are quite, it's quite a fast growing weed, but it's a really kind of good utility plant for the beginning of the setup. It grows super quickly and it just helps to kind of avoid these early algae issues that we often experience in these setups. So I'm just going to plant this kind of towards the centre. It's going to add a lovely backdrop. Uh, Dave might want to keep it or he, he can take it out and let the crypts just kind of grow crazy around the background. That's up to him. 
So I'm just going to park them around the background now, and guess what I'm going to do? Another time lapse. Okay, we've nearly planted. We've just got the epiphyte or rheophyte plants to go in. In fact, I've got a question for you, quite a technical one. What do you think they're called, epiphyte or rheophyte? So they're the plants that attach to decor. Now, my understanding is rheophytes come from areas of fast flowing water and they're plants that are attached to wood or rocks. Epiphyte plants, my understanding, is plants that live on other plants. So let me know in the comments if you know the difference. Um, would love to know a definitive answer. Uh, we've just got the, like I said, the rheophyte or the epiphyte plants to go in. We've got a mixture of bucophalandra, anubius, we've got some hygrophila, pinnatifida. So let's get them in there and then we've got one special plant to go in at the end, which we'll talk about right at the end. Okay, last but not least, we've got our tropical lily or Nymphia lotus. This is from Tropica, it's a bulb. Um, we're gonna plot, uh, left a, an empty space there just to the left for it. And it's really important to plant this properly. You don't really wanna be burying the bulb completely. Just have the very top bit of the bulb exposed to the water and that's gonna produce new leaves. It's gonna grow really quickly, especially at this time of year. So I'm just gonna plant that with my hand, just making sure the top of the bulb exposed to the water when it gets filled and that's it Simple as that. okay we're fully planted now i think this cave looks great i think dave likes it dave loves it Yay. so now it's time to fill up with water and then we'll fit the equipment let's do that now Okay guys, that's it, escape's complete. Uh, Dave's really, really happy with it. I think his other members of the family are happy. Say yes. Yes. Yay. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. One of the best escapes I've done for a client. So it's a classic George Farmer style nature aquarium. You know, I'm not gonna lie. We've used Java Fern, we've used Crypt, Book of Landra, Nubius, all the classics that I like to use. And I use them for a reason. They're low maintenance. Uh, they're easy, they look beautiful. And so why not use them? You know, they are classic for a reason. And yeah, I'll leave a complete list of the plant species in the description and all the materials we've used if you're interested in finding out more about them. So thanks so much to Dave and his family for inviting me into their beautiful home. Some excellent biscuits and coffee, which is always good. I've just had really good fun. Dave's helped me out with the plant prep as well, which has been ace. I'm sure the family will enjoy this escape for many months to come. I look forward to hopefully, if they invite me back, doing an update for you guys in a few months. So that's it for now. I've obviously got a last question for you and most of you may be able to guess what it is. What fish would you put in this aquascape? Let me know in the comments below. 
always interested to know your thoughts. I read all of your comments and I try to respond to you as much as I can. Okay guys, I'm gonna sign off now. You take care, keep on scaping. Cheerio. Thank you.